Hey, what's up guys? This is Joe from Analog Archive, back with another vinyl video. Today's video is going to be another contribution to the Blue Note 1500 series project. And today's album is Blue Note 1573, John Jenkins with Kenny Burrell. So this has John Jenkins on alto sax, Kenny Burrell is on the guitar, Sonny Clark is on the piano, Paul Chambers is on bass, and Danny Richmond is on the drums. This was recorded August 11th, 1957, and then came out later on uh, in 1957. This has six tracks uh, on the album. Four of the six are tracks that were composed by artists on the album. Three of them were written by John Jenkins, and then the fourth one was written by Kenny Burrell. The remaining two are standards. Um, and uh, 1957 was a real significant year for John Jenkins. Of all of the recordings that he put out, whether as a leader or as a sideman, uh, there was only one album that uh, was in 1990. So 33 years after uh, this big year, 1957 for him, um, all of his other albums were from 1957. Um, he played with musicians like Jackie McLean, Clifford Jordan, Bobby Timmons, Donald Byrd, Hank Mobley, um, along with a few others. Um, he didn't have a huge output as a leader or as a sideman. He was much more prolific as a sideman. But um, in terms of albums that he was the leader on, there was only a handful um, and again all of them really came in 1957 except for for one of them I uh, this was the only album that John Jenkins had on Blue Note um, and then he would go on and uh, he would have an album or two like Prestige New Jazz uh, as either a sideman or again as uh, as the leader but he recorded for Blue Note Prestige, New Jazz, Savoy, Regent, and Riverside. So he's really hit all of the big uh, jazz labels, but was just never really a prolific musician um, for whatever reason. I didn't really look too much into his bio in terms of what he did afterwards or why there was such a large gap in, uh, in between his recordings, but um, that was kind of how it was. Kenny Burrell, on the other hand, was a very prolific musician at this time. He was starting to heat up. He had had a few albums on Blue Note. One of them I showed earlier in this series, 1523, introducing Kenny Burrell. And then he was also, um, he also had an album, 1543, that I think was just called Kenny Burrell, that had an Andy Warhol uh, looking cover to it. He also had a handful of albums on Prestige. Um, one of them uh, I have that I showed in a, a recent finds a few months ago, All Night Long. Uh, a great session there. And then he had a few others uh, that were uh, on Prestige as well. So a great lineup. Sonny Clark was a great addition on the piano. Paul Chambers is always an excellent choice on the bass. Um, in terms of Danny Richmond, I'm not terribly familiar uh, with with him, but um, listening to this album was a great contribution as well. So to get into the tracks, the first track is called "From This Moment On," and uh, that was a that's a Cole Porter uh, standard. Um, it's a pretty fast paced uh, track, just like really most Cole Porter standards are. Um, at least for my experience, hearing L hearing tracks by him, um, they're all real fast moving, real swinging kind of tracks. Um, John Jenkins is great uh, at the beginning of that real kind of a nice scorching alto sax solo. Um, Sonny Clark is great on that as well. Great piano solo um, along with uh, Kenny Burrell having that nice, a nice swinging solo to it. But just um, overall, this album is is one of my favorites in just all of the the Blue Note catalog. Um, a great kind of contrast between John Jenkins and Kenny Burrell, but just it works really well. Um, there isn't a whole lot of other Blue Note albums where you have a uh, 
a, a, a saxophone leader, and then you also have a guitar with it, um, especially Kenny Burrell. Um, but it's just a really great way to start the album. The second track is called uh, Motif, and that is a John Jenkins original. A little bit slower tempo than what you hear on the first track, but just uh, um, still moving at a, a decent pace. Um, very bluesy, very soulful feel to that one as well. John Jenkins starts the solos again. Um, really bluesy solo by him, um, really commanding the stage and just a really great tone as well. Um, Kenny Burrell comes in after that with a great solo as well to complement that um, and just plays in that track. He, he kind of picks up the tempo a little bit as well with his solos with a, a string of uh, faster notes. We then get to the closing song on the A side, which is called Everything I Have Is Yours. Um, and that's the other standard that's on the album by uh, Burton Lane and Harold Adamson. Um, so just an older track, I think, from probably the, the 30s or 40s. And uh, that is the ballad um, that features on the album. It's the only ballad, but um, just a really nice difference in sound real contrast to the rest of the tracks real really slows it down very soulful very nice uh, late night listening john jenkins does very well with with his solo really uh kind of piercing your ears making you uh really feel that emotion coming from um coming from him and just a really nice sharp tone to to that Sonny Clark um, features kind of in the background on that at the beginning, just accompanying uh, John Jenkins as he solos. Kenny Burrell then comes in um, with uh, just a really great, uh, really soulful, real slow solo um, there. And just, it sounds great. Um, Kenny Burrell really was, was good at picking up the pace, really moving at a fast pace. But when you slow it down, you really hear that versatility from him. So a great one there um, and, and just enjoyable overall. Um, Sonny Clark is great on that as well. I really always love his contributions to, to albums, um, just his tone, how he played, very uh, emotional, very aggressive style of playing. To, to it. So that was a great one to close out the A side. The B side starts with uh, a track called Sharon, which is another John Jenkins original. Great melody to begin by John Jenkins, Kenny Burrell. Um, you then get into the solos. Kenny Burrell starts this time and just rips right into a solo. Um, I really enjoy those kind of tracks. Uh, there's um, on Donald Byrd's Off to the Races, which is in the, the 4000 series. It kind of reminded me of that where there was a, a real nice uh, melody that was kind of set at the beginning and then the solo start and it just just rips right into it. And this time Kenny Burrell starts and it's it's incredible, um, just the sound and, and the speed that he's moving on that one um, really makes you pay attention to it. So that's great. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul Chambers is solo on that one and uh, uses the bow to uh, to do his, his solo, which was not uncommon for him. That was something that he did uh, somewhat frequently on a lot of albums. So to hear that, a um, little bit different, but was enjoyable there. Uh, you get to the second track, which is called uh, Shala, Shalamu. Uh, that is another John Jenkins original. And uh, similar to that previous track, Sharon, uh, just really great playing overall. John Jenkins, Kenny Burrell, uh, and, uh, and Sonny Clark as well. But just an enjoyable back and forth between John Jenkins and Kenny Burrell. And then you get to the closing track, which is uh, Kenny Burrell's contribution to the album Blues for Two. And uh, just like the name kind of, uh, in furs, it is a bluesy feel to it, um, and it is a very quick track as well, probably the quickest track on the album. Uh, Sonny Clark is uh, has a real great solo right at the beginning, um, and then uh, Paul Chambers has another solo, he uses the, the bow as well on that, um, and uh, just really enjoyable overall uh, between the soloists and 
one that I really enjoyed, but it's hard to pick a favorite on this album. Um, it, it just really, all the tracks had a very unique sound to it, very, um, for the most part, real fast moving kind of tracks, which I really have always enjoyed. Um, been looking for this one for a while, found this uh, back in, I think it was um, like March, and um, gotten this in from the, uh, one of my hometown stores I've talked about a lot, Bob Shop Records. Um, they had gotten in a collection uh, that had, it was mostly Japanese pressings along with these UA Monos. So this was one of the UA Monos. Um, immediately when I saw this, I knew that I needed to, to grab it. Um, one that I had been looking for for a while and I have always, have always really wanted, but just never really found a copy. Um, in terms of other pressings, again, this came out in 1957, so there is that original pressing. Um, I don't know many people, if really anybody at all, other than some real serious uh, collectors on Instagram that I've seen that have an original of this. Um, a lot more people have this UA Mono from the 70s, and uh, there's, I believe there is a Japanese pressing of this, and then... Um, I do believe as well that there is a Music Matters. I may be wrong. It might be class, a classic records, but there is a more modern pressing of this that um, more than likely can be found, but one that is really worth checking out, not one that you really hear about a whole lot. John Jenkins, again, is not a, a terribly well-known um, musician, especially for people that are newer to jazz, um, kind of more novice jazz collectors, but... Don't pass this one up. A great, great, um, just uh, fast-moving session and one that's really enjoyable. So this is Blue Note 1573. Um, so that's it for this one. Thank you again, uh, as always, Stephen in the bass clef for letting me be a part of it. I have to look to see what other 1500 ones that I have. Um, I have another recent finds video coming soon uh, with some real big grails from the Bob shop as well. Um, so just look, look out for that. Um, and uh, please think about liking and subscribing if you have not already. And I will see you in the next vinyl video. Bye.